Hi everybody, welcome to episode 18 of the Teesside Business Podcast. Um, today we're very lucky to be joined by Peter. Um, Hello. Peter, thanks very much for coming and joining us. Oh, thanks for inviting me. If you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and what your business does. Okay, well, um, uh, as we just said, I'm um, Peter. Um, my business is uh, uh, Italian Cafe Bar and Deli over mm-hmm. in Gisborough. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on the high street, um, so it's a fairly good location, but yep. we are sort of up on the first floor. Yep. Um, Starting off in business, it's always hard to uh, location. Yeah, yeah. Get the yeah, right yeah, location yeah, yeah. and everything. So we've uh, we're we're up on the first floor and uh, sort of a little arch way to, to get through. So a little bit um, of uh, a challenge getting people to sort of come down come down there. Um, the sort of the reason I, I set up is uh, the sort of the Italian side of things is I just have a bit of a love affair with Italy. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything Italy just. Um, just love it. Yep. Um, that all sort of came about uh, when I uh, sort of first started uh, dating my wife, what my, who is now my wife. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so um, fifteen odd years ago, yep. when I met her, and we she, she's got an Italian sort of background. So oh, okay. her mum was uh, Italian, and mm-hmm. um, sort of a big family, Italian yeah, yeah. family over here. So, yep. sort of getting into that family culture and sort of going around at Christmas and everybody's there. Um, and then obviously went over to Italy and just fell in love with the place. First time I went, food, yeah, uh, coffee, yeah, wine as yeah. well. So probably the the best thing. <laughs> Did kind of ruin it for you when you had to come back here and just have you know, coffee and food. That we've got yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so since then I've, I'd never ever drank coffee um, yeah. until I'd met my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't like it because obviously at home my mum just had the yeah instant, instant coffees yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that and I was, but when he had it when I was younger I was just like this yeah, yeah. awful yeah. Yeah, yeah. But obviously meeting the wife and going around the Italian house they had proper yeah. coffee machines and all beans the ground the beans and, yeah, and everything yeah. and it was like have you ever had coffee? no no I don't like coffee yeah. try this yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was it just loved coffee from, from yep. there as well so um, wanted to start something back then sort of 15 20 years ago well 20 years ago 15 16 years ago um, about uh, a, a coffee shop, but I never really sort of had the guts to do it mm-hmm. because the coffee industry wasn't really there then. Yeah. Um, it's only in the sort of the past five to probably eight years, really, yeah. where we've had a, a real boom in in the, in the coffee industry. So um, I had, had businesses previously, so I've always liked being self-employed, trying mm-hmm. different things. I don't think I've ever knew really what I wanted to do, what my yeah. ideal business is. I just like being self-employed yep. and um, sort of making my own decisions and, and things. So I've done that. Um, after a while, went to university, done business management degree. Mm-hmm. Um, done that sort of a mature student when I was sort of 26. Um, so I took three, two, three years out of out of work. My last year, got a job at a construction company, um, just like sales and distribution side of things. Um, when I got my degree, stayed there. They offered me a job, yep. just kept kept promoted, yeah, promoted, yeah. promoted. Um, and I, so I was there for just short of eight years, and then last year got made redundant. Yep. Um, so I was like, right, now's the time to to yeah, yeah. get back to sort of being self employed and do something that I've always fancied doing, but just never yeah, actually, yeah, 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 never actually got around to doing. Um, it was always hard convincing. Uh, Francesca, my wife, to, yeah, yeah. Uh, to actually sort of leave a secure job, yeah, of course, um, and uh, and, and start the business where it's obviously the the security sort of disappears all <laughs> yeah, <laughs> overnight, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. So so that's a bit of the background of sort of where I've been, where I've come from, and um, how it all how it all started. Okay. Um, so was it kind of a is she, <laughs> So is she kind of like the the food side of it, and you're the kind of other side? No, of it? no. My well, wife, uh, she's not really involved in it. Oh, at right. All so, this. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just me. Um, my wife, uh, she's a teacher. Yep. Um, so she teaches in a primary school. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's just a part time, three days a week, um, and the rest of the time looks after after our two boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when it it came to opening and things like that, did you did you sense that there was like a real gap in the market for like authentic Italian stuff or? Um, there was a bit of, um, sort of, of everything sort of combined into one of why I sort of chose Gisborough and doing the Italian thing and what I was, the sort of the type of things that I was doing. Um, over in Gisborough, there's a few Italian restaurant, well, one Italian restaurant, um, 
and sort of there's a few coffee shops and things, but nothing that's really authentic Italian. Yeah. Um, sort of for throughout the day. I know Sergio's, the restaurant over there is authentic mm-hmm. Italian. Um, um, but he's only open on an evening, so it's yeah. a completely different yeah, proposition to, yeah, yeah. To, to what we've got. Um, so it was... There was nothing over in Gisborough, so I thought, mm-hmm. right, it's a, it's a good place to, yeah. to actually put that because there is a bit of a gap there. There's other things close to it Ish. and yeah, yeah. Um, coffee shops, uh, there's lots of them around these days. Yeah. So it's a, it was all about doing something different and yeah. um, sort of not just offering any old coffee. It's um, Particular stuff. Yeah. I mean, the coffee itself, um, I import from uh, Naples. Oh, okay. Um, and it was personal favorite of mine that i had probably about eight nine years ago over yeah. in over in italy and, yeah, yeah. and i tried a, a few years back to try and set up a website and import it from italy and just sell it retail yeah, I thought, yeah. this is a, it's a absolutely fantastic coffee yeah um but at the time like now we, we don't really want to let it go out of all oh, right or italy. control kind of yeah. yeah yeah so i just kept on going at them going at them yeah, yeah. um and eventually they're like, all right, okay then. Yeah. By the time I'd done that, I'd been made redundant and the business was coming along. So I was like, yeah, right, yeah. I can use it in the cafe. Yeah, so yeah. It all sort of fell into place, really. Of, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of that, so. so do the, do you import the the rest of the food and everything directly? Um, I do. There's everything that, uh, well, 95% of the of the products come from Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I use, um, I use a couple of supplies that um, uh, import direct from Italy and they distribute around the UK. We also use a couple of companies in Italy as well that sort of they use all local farmers and so it's yeah. all their local farmers markets and everything. They'll get all the products in on a weekly basis. Yeah. Um, and then on their sort of the chilled storage and yeah, yeah. Um, chilled trucks, transport it over and sort of do a round around the, yeah, yeah. Around the UK and, right, okay. and do that. So And I, I sort of make an excuse to go over to Italy and find new products. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I, market I mean, research. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is market research. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, takes a lot of convincing to um to fran that it is market research yeah, yeah. it's business it's business <laughs> yeah yeah we have to go we yeah. have to go so um so i like to we've just been on holiday because we drive over mm-hmm. um the boot was mainly filled with the products, Italian products yeah, to, yeah. to come back which i've dropped over at the cafe this morning so so what are the main differences then when it comes to um for between like italian food and like other type like delis and stuff what are the main differences where the main ones of it um the main differences are, I think, um, it's just well known that Italy is one of the countries that are really passionate yeah, about yeah. the food, and it's yeah, all yeah. everything they do with food is quality. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things over there aren't mass produced like they are over here. It's yeah. It is smaller Small farms batch and stuff. Yeah, yeah. stuff that uh, they obviously still have the some of the sort of mass produced things because they need it. Yeah. But, of course. Um, a lot of it is sort of locally made and it's because people are passionate about what they do yeah and it's not all about just making money whereas i think a country like ours where the population is just absolutely massive compared to yeah yeah italy, somewhere yeah, like yeah. italy or france or places like that um it's just a bit more sort of care taken about the food and yeah um climate of helps course. as well yeah, so yeah, everything absolutely. I mean, I um, I import um, tomatoes on a weekly basis as well. Yeah. Um, and when they come in, they're red, yeah, juicy, yeah. and just full of flavour. And then you yeah. get some from some of the wholesalers over here. And yeah. You're like, yeah. So it just makes everything taste that bit better. Which, yeah. Ingredients are very simple. It's very simple stuff that they yeah. they use in Italian dishes, um, which is probably why I can do it because it's yeah. <laughs> simple. Well, it's, the, it's the quality. Yeah. Of it's it, the quality though. of yeah, it yeah. That, that that makes that difference. Yeah. But you see it all the time, don't you, in like restaurants and things where you go once and it's great quality and stuff, and then you go back a few months later and it's the same dishes, the same menu, yeah. but the taste of it's completely changed. It's because you know, one of the things they look to just cut, cut well, not cut corners, but say margin, etc., yeah. and stuff like that. It, and it, it's hard as well because um, doing something with food, it's best to change your menu to with the seasonality of, of different products, yeah. because when it's in season, that product's going to taste absolutely fantastic. When yeah. it's not in season, it doesn't taste that great. So it changes yeah. the full... You only need one ingredient in a dish to, to change the ready. full... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's... Um, if you're not changing your menu yeah. with the seasons, the seasons yeah, yeah. Um, then then you can get, uh, can get a problem. And it is difficult, certainly for a small business, sort of if yeah. it, like myself, I work... Um, 90% of the time on my own, yeah. I have somebody that um, 
uh, Paul, um, who's covered me while I've been away on holiday. So yeah. thanks, Paul, if uh, if you do listen yeah, to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, if you listen and for covering um, the day, thanks. Uh, so he's put holidays in where he works to cover my place. Mm. Um, so, which is that, that's something in it sacrificing holidays it is, to it is, yeah. go work somewhere um, else. So and he's um, he's Italian as well, so he likes that type of stuff. And yeah, it's yeah. where he, he works in that type of, in the same industry as well. So it's yeah, it's just second nature to him to come in and just take over and take over. It. Yeah. Um, so and other times I have my mum helping me, so she comes and waits on on a yeah, when yeah. I open on the evenings. Um, but the rest of the time, it's just me. So Monday to Friday, it's generally yeah. just me. Um, so it's hard to actually do things like social yeah, yeah. media marketing. Yeah, of and, course. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at different ideas and yeah, and just certainly when you go home, you've I've got two kids, so yeah, they want to be playing with you. Well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so doing everything at once, trying to get the business going. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it is hard. So I do sympathise with some businesses oh, where of they have yeah, sort yeah. Of the same menu all the time. And yeah, for ease. Um, so are you yeah. changing like how many times a year are you changing the menu? Um, so I think there's four seasons. Is that four is, changes or? Um, I've never, so far, I've just, things have just been going so fast and so quick. It's, yeah, yeah. I planned to do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it hasn't quite worked out how you really yeah, yeah. want it to. So you just sort of roll with the punches and you yeah, think, right, um, I need to do it. Yeah. But it's got to be right. So there's no point in rushing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you do it when you get the time can, and, yeah, yeah. To, and to make it right. Cause I just, when I do something, I like to do it right. So I yeah, don't. Of course don't like to um, sort of just think, right, I need to change that. Yeah. I'll just change it for the sake of it and just... Yeah, you want to do it properly, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Because this type of industry with um, with different foods and things, get it wrong once, mm. people just don't come back. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, completely. You've yeah. Got well, when it comes to stuff like that, then, are there things like... Because um, I've, I've never been to Italy, so I'm like completely mm. uneducated on it. Um, are there like, types of food or meals and stuff that are like unbelievably popular in Italy that just don't transfer over to... Uh, Britain or, or the North East, particularly, <laughs> shall we say? Um, Italian food, people, you go to Italian restaurants, and it's like, I suppose it's a bit like the Indian cuisine as well, where yeah. if you go to India, I've never been, no, no. just from people who've been who tell yeah, me yeah. where you go there and the curries and things are completely different to, to yeah, what they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. They've been adapted. Yeah, for their like, for tikka the, masala and stuff yeah. is actually like a British dish. Yeah. Same as like all the Chinese dishes that you get. Yeah. And nothing like, you know, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, so they've all been adapted for sort of the British taste. Um, it's the same with Italian dishes, sort of like spaghetti bolognese and things like that. Yeah. You get them over in Italy, but yeah. it's always just it's on the menu because they know the tourists yeah, want it. Yeah, yeah. You go out into sort of the sort of the sticks in Italy mm. and it's you very rarely see yeah anything like that on the menu. Yeah. Um and sort of our dishes over here are, uh, the Italian dishes in restaurants tend to be very, very heavy with sauce. Yeah. Um okay. in Italy it's a very light covering. Yeah. Um just to just to add the flavour yeah, to yeah, the sauce, so you're yeah. not um, sort of having loads and loads of sauce. So those type of things where um, it's just adding the flavour to it, mm. um, just to the pasta or, or something like that, um, the actual authenticity hasn't sort of yeah, transferred made its way on. over here, yeah. um, which is one of the things I try to do. So I do everything, um, make it sort of the Italian way rather yeah, yeah. than sort of... Because I think once people try it, they love it. Yeah, um, and I think that's a thing with um, when people starting up a restaurant or food business. They want to maybe just want to try something different, and they want to push what yeah. they want to do. Yeah, but yeah. then they think, "Well, but I need to yeah, supply yeah. what the customer wants." Try and ease them into it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's one of those things. The customer doesn't really know what they want until yeah, yeah. they've had it. Mm. They've had tried something new. Um, I mean, cause people that uh, come into the into the cafe, I know, um, got a bunch of regular customers mm. um, sort of coming throughout the week. And I know everybody by name, know every what the drink, yeah, um, yeah. what sandwich they're going to order because yeah. they've come in, they've tried something new, yeah. But then they've they've liked it, yeah, so yeah. Stuck with that yeah, one. I'm yeah. like, Don't you want to try? Oh no, but I like this one. I was... So it's like, no, come on, you like you didn't, you yeah, never yeah. had that before. Try something new. Yeah. Oh, I know, but <laughs> no, <it's the> <laughs> so try getting people to try new things. So, yeah. um, and I think it's for for many businesses, it's hard to sort of keep trying to do that yeah um and keep on with that and get that authenticity through um which over the years i think has sort of phased out but i think now with a lot of um sort of artisan products and things coming through i yeah. think people are more willing to try different things yeah, now. yeah. 
Um, so I think there's a lot more businesses trying it and sticking at it. Yeah, um, rather than doing it for a little yeah. bit and abandoning it kind yeah. of thing. Um, I think another uh, sort of sort of food sort of group that we don't do as much as um, the Italians do is fish. Yeah, like everything. I mean, um, which is I crazy. I think when we're in the northeast with the sea so, right but, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it, Italy's. Um, well, we've probably got more coastline than, than Italy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but they've obviously got um, the the full coastline, mm. um, and most of the uh, the towns and things are probably more or less round yeah round the sea. So mm. it's um, it's very easy to get the fish and yeah, um, but things that we probably wouldn't even consider eating, like sort of the little mini squids. There's, um, I was over in Naples in April. Um, visiting the, I've done a uh, tour of the factory mm. where the coffee's brewed and uh, oh, well roasted and everything. Mm. Um, and um, the export director who, who was sort of taking me around for a couple of days mm. was, he was like, "What do you like to eat? What um, yeah, yeah. what do you want?" I was like, "You just tell you all. Yeah, yeah. I'll eat it." Yeah, yeah. Um, so some of the things, um, I think it was one of them. I mean, I, I like quite like sea fish and stuff, and I, yeah. it was. There was something came. It was um, well, obviously yeah, mussels and different things like that. But there was one that was like about the length of your finger, really mm. skinny. It had like a tail hanging out at the end. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you look at it and you go, Ooh, "That doesn't look quite appetising." But yeah. then when you taste, eat it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's phenomenal. But I think we do over here sort of look at something and go, oh, "Don't like the look of it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I always not laugh like it. A, my wife like loves fish, but yeah. then when we go or, like anywhere, and you get like. The whole fish, yes. And she's yeah. like, well, that's not one. It was like, well, that's what a fish is. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and it tastes like so much yeah. better. Um, so it is like a bit of a crazy disconnect and stuff yeah. like that. They do. Uh, my wife done the same last year uh, when we were in Italy, and she um, she likes sea bass. Yeah. Um, so they do um, sort of a a sea bass over in Italy. I forget what what they call the dish, um, but it's um, a whole sea bass mm-hmm. cooked in a sort of a about a, a centimeter crust of just sea salt yeah yeah i've heard of it yeah. um so they, they bring it all out and yeah. they break the crust open and then yeah. there's so the she was like sat there looking at it and they yeah. head off filling it yeah, out yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. and she sat there loved it but she was like i wasn't expecting that. yeah yeah i wasn't expecting like, <laughs> so um i think she only got it because i said oh that'll be nice yeah um, she wasn't expecting the full the if full it didn't food. taste well yeah it would have been on a block out yeah. imagine but um yeah she wouldn't have spoke to me for a while if uh... <laughs> So if you hadn't liked it. Uh, what about like the coffee side of it and things like that? Then is it um, obviously? Is it just a case of the um, like in over in Italy? Is it all like espresso types thing, or is it is like espresso is the main drink over there? Yeah. Um, I mean, coffee for for them is just a it's yeah. a way of life. I mean, everything is you go for an espresso. People that um, go get an espresso in the morning and look yeah. stop on the services. The services are fantastic. All oh, right. Okay. Um, and you go in, it's completely... If you've never been into an Italian services and you yeah. go in the first time, you're like, what the hell is going on yeah. here? Um, and it'd only be just like... Um, so like the road out here down on, on Yarm Road, yeah. uh, you'd, the, the services, um, it'd be just something like that, but they'll have a coffee bar in there, have yeah. all the, the like top-end coffee machines, and yeah. um, people go in and there's like... Prob- it's like full, you can't move in the places. Really? Because they're just there. Quick coffee. Yeah, and, and off they go. And off they go. Um the Italians don't drink. Um, the only time they have a cappuccino is yeah on a morning. Yeah. Um, after eleven o'clock, if you ask for an, a, a cappuccino, they're like, "What? You want a cappuccino?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because that's classed as a breakfast drink. Yeah. Over in Italy, and the rest of the day it's just espresso or maybe it's like a macchiato. So just one that touch of touch yeah, of milk. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you ask for a latte, yeah, you get a cup of hot milk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, the culture there is a bit different, but um, I mean they've been doing coffee for God. Yeah. 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 Um, even just I mean I still use the um, the little mocha pots. So mm-hmm. You know, like the silver looks like a bit like a teapot type yeah, of thing. Yeah. Where you, we put in there because they make a just a great cup of coffee. But is the equipment side like a lot different then? Like um, obviously, you know, you you get coffee machines, etc. Over here, you know, like proper mm, coffee machines. Like not particularly. No, um, you find they use a lot more of the um, of the traditional side of of the coffee machines, where with the pull levers and yeah, and um, where the lever creates the pressure to push the the coffee water through, through the coffee yeah, yeah. rather than. A pump, 
yeah. pushing it through. Um, but I think in the technology with the pumps and things on coffee machines these days, yeah. they're going more and more yeah, yeah. that way. But you never ever see anything like, um, I'm not going to mention a competitor, but uh, <laughs> a Costa. You yeah. go in their place and um, they've got a huge, probably a coffee machine the size of this table yeah, yeah. where it's and they've got four group heads on it. They've got yeah. a backup one just for yeah, yeah. in case that one goes down. Um, and when I was looking for my coffee machine and I went to see the um, uh, the, the suppliers and I was going through and like, oh yeah, we supply some of them to, to Costa. Mm. Um he said, Spit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving and, immediately. Uh, he said the um, he said the machines that have got fantastic machines. Yeah. Um, they're great for like when they do the barista world championships and stuff like that, where they want to like the slightest little tweak and hmm. ch- completely change your drink and things. Like he said, they, they use about ten percent of what the machines are. Said, yeah, really. Um, so it's if you've got a good pump and a, and yeah, a yeah. sort of the um, the water filtration then. Mm. They are, all the coffee machines do the same job. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Is it just a case then of the person of like making the coffee? Like I know, like they generally like there's a thing, isn't there, where people kind of you can go like down the rabbit hole with coffee really mm. quickly. You know, yeah. you can start off at you know getting we'll call them X brand from now on, but yes. the big coffee chains. <laughs> yes, because we yeah. don't want to give them any more credit than what they deserve. But um, so is it just the case of the pe- person like if you could get say. Five minutes training, I imagine I could use like a custom machine, but oh, yeah. versus somebody who's been doing it for twenty years, who's like yeah. you know a master barista or whatever, like yeah. literally the same ingredients, could they make something that tastes ten times like different? Or... Yeah, really, God, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, because even throughout the day, your coffee machine, you can go in on the morning, you set your coffee machine up, um, and you need to adjust it throughout the day because yeah. the coffee beans, coffee beans, because they're an organic material, yeah. Over time, the the change, so the longer coffee beans exposed to the air. It dries yeah. out. Yeah. And once it, it's the the oils and everything in it that mm. sort of make the flavour of the coffee. Yeah. So as it dries, the coffee bean sort of dries out. Yeah. Um, you're getting less flavour from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, and obviously where you've got your grinders and things, and you're in sort of a kitchen area, and you've got mm-hmm. the water boilers going and everything. Yeah. yeah. Temperature goes up, so it heats the beans up before yeah. you've used them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they dry out a little bit, so. You need to put more beans in and do a finer grind to get the same flavour as you did earlier yeah, in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Um, and a lot of places don't do that. Mm. Um, certainly it costs us because they're just so busy. Oh, no, I know. Um, and, I mean, I, I don't sort of complain about Costa or Starbucks like, or anyone. Because I was going to ask you kind of like, is it... Obviously, they're a big part of, like, the coffee boom. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. getting people interested in coffee, they play a big role in it. Yeah. Obviously, the market is incredibly saturated with them. Like we are, like always joke that in Stockton High Street, the literally there's a Costa over the road from yeah. each other. You know, like it's incredibly. But I imagine the problem is that it's great from getting from some like from somebody who's drinking Nescafe all day long. Yes, getting them to take that step to drinking, you know, probably yeah. main coffee. But then I imagine it's the step after that where it's just kids who've got part time jobs. Let's be honest, most of the time, yeah, yeah. who probably don't really have an interest in coffee. No. Or they can't take the time to make a proper cup of coffee because we've got a, a queue of 20 yeah. people, you know what I mean? Um, like, it's great that there's more independent coffee shops uh, open up. Like, we go in a place in Middlesbrough called Off the Ground, um, which yeah. are nice guys in there. Um, we always laugh that Rick, the guy who produced the podcast, who's the man behind the camera, always gets, like, the most obscure-sounding coffee that <laughs> I can get in there. Um, but is it a good thing that they came along? Like um, for, for me, definitely, because it, if... Um, People come in and the customers they they come in and they they get their coffee and stuff and they complain about Costa and I'd say well yeah the coffee's not great yeah uh, but if it wasn't for them or like like of Starbucks yeah, or yeah. Nero's the industry wouldn't be here yeah so for all those independents that are starting up now and mm-hmm. do a better job than most of those yeah yeah um, places. Um, we wouldn't have been able to because it's hard to start to build a market from one independent. Yeah, yeah. Person. You need, yeah, you yeah. need, like you say, like they did, like masses of money to mm. be able to, to do it and just expand and expand and expand. I suppose it's the same as any interest, really. Like there's always entry level stuff, no matter yeah. what you do, and then there's always the people at the other yeah. end of that who are masters of the craft. So if you didn't have the entry level stuff, you know, you wouldn't have. You know the opposite end of this. You wasn't the it's the same like technology with phones and things like that. So obviously, Nokia were one of the big early players. Yeah. Um, 
if it wasn't for them, you'd probably still have Apple, but you probably wouldn't have yeah, yeah, the, the Apple that yeah, we yeah. have now because um, although Apple's an innovative company, yeah, yeah. This probably still had some ideas from Nokia. When yeah, they're standing on the shoulders of giants, isn't yeah. it? Like, um, um, but I suppose it's more like obviously that's an innovative thing. Like, I don't know how much like a cup of coffee would be innovative. I know there's obviously new pumps and stuff coming up, but yeah. if it's more the craft kind of thing of it, then it's uh, for, for me. It's it's coffee is um, it's becoming more and more of people's daily lives. Yeah, and it's it always one of the things. Although I say about Costa is um, they, they, on their side it says for coffee lovers yeah um, and um, um, one of the other slogan, slogans is um, um, saving the world from mediocre coffee yeah yeah which is what I think there's exactly yeah there is now isn't it it's, it's yeah, drinkable yeah. Um, I used to spend a lot of money in Costa when I, in my old job when I was yeah. travelling around the country because you knew what you were going to get yeah um, but um, I mean it's it's great when a lot of customers come in now and they say oh we won't even go back there now. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's one directly opposite me. Yeah. Um, so they come in and they're like, oh, we've been going there for years and years and years and we thought it was a good cup of coffee. Well, it's an eye-opening yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I suppose like if you're just drinking Nescafe and then have Costa, you're like, God, yeah. this is what a cup. But then when you have another one, you're like, oh my God. Like, yeah. And then the gap between good cups of coffee and then Nescafe, yeah. like the dried stuff. like it's the same with um, uh, like beers and lagers and things yeah. where... Over here, for years, we were used to Carlin and Foster's and yeah, yeah. Heineken, Bex, yeah, all yeah. those type of things, which were sort of the mediocre beers, and then yeah. you get all the sort of the um, like the, the craft beers. Yeah, and the IPA and, stuff that's yeah. really um, popular even now. Even a lot of the European beers that are coming over now that sort of haven't got massive marketing budgets to sort of really yeah, break yeah. the market. People try them, and they're like, why have I been drinking that for so, yeah, so yeah. long yeah yeah this um, is like dishwater and yeah. kind of thing so it's just um it really is about the quality which is again one of the reasons why i set it up and doing all the authentic yeah. stuff and what it, what makes a difference is is the quality it's um i'd love a bit more quantity like any business yeah, would, yeah. But, <laughs> um it's um it's i don't know i think people are coming round to more of um going for quality rather yeah. than just oh I, um, I absolutely think yeah um so it's i think a lot of independence now will i think there's going to be more independence coming through um and sort of taking that market share from sort of the yeah, yeah. The, the bigger businesses like costa and things because they realize that they're just money grabbing corporations yeah. well i feel like <laughs> there's um i felt sorry before like there was a on Potrack Lane in Stockton, there's um, an independent-owned coffee shop there, and literally like n- ten feet from it, they built a Starbucks. The is that the Ingleby Coffee? One? No, no, it's uh, near Asda on Potrack Lane. It's got next to the Jump Three Sixty. Bar- yeah, I Bar- think it was yeah. called Ingleby. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. Bar- 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 or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and they literally built like a Starbucks, like yeah, from it. And, the, yeah, the drive-through. Yeah, yeah, like I, I think I saw some say like. Um, so me saying, oh, they'll put Starbucks out of business. Like, you don't understand. Like, unfortunately, they've got a real mountain to climb because yeah. technically, if if it's owned by Star, like, I'm not. Is Starbucks franchised or is that just Costa? Um, know, some of I think some of it's franchised, but I don't think every yeah, yeah. everything's franchised. Yeah. Like, it just it's part of the chain, isn't it? Like, yeah. it doesn't even need to make money really. No. Now it's the built it the built the premises for it at the end yeah. of the day. Like, I felt really bad for them. Um, but it, it is. I always it's it is bad when you when you see that because. As much as people sort of like quality, they know if it's people from around the area, well, from out of the area, and they're coming in, and that little business is, was the first one on there, and it's the yeah, only yeah. one there, they'll go, oh, we'll try in there. Yeah. They don't know what coffee they do. No. So they don't know whether they're going to like the coffee or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, Starbucks is there, so somebody, then now they're going to go, right, okay, there's a Starbucks. I know I can get, well, I'm not even going to say a decent cup from Starbucks, because yeah, I think yeah. they're the worst. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, but they, say, they know what they're getting from Starbucks, yeah. so they go there and they get that rather than think, risk and saying, oh, that... Yeah, a little independent. Because there is, out there, there is some independence that yeah. do coffee and things, and it's not great. Yeah. Um, but that's just... That's, that's business. That's life, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, you can get... Co- like, coffee machines are, like, in bars and things now, yes. aren't they? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, um, so... But I, I suppose it's one of those things, isn't it, where quality or law always kind of like shine through. Yeah. Um, and I think from from any any independent business, somebody started it because they've got a passion about something. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so you're always I think you're always going to get that better service and better quality from an independent business than yeah. than, than a big chain. Oh, massively um, so. Regardless, I mean, some of the big chains started out as, yeah, as independent, yeah, yeah. and they were probably fantastic back then with yeah, the service yeah. and everything, and they keep that story going all the way through. Yes, yeah. yeah, the lose story it just sort of degrades a little um, bit. So. Plus, there's the like Gisborne's a great place for like independent-owned businesses and things it like is. that, um, and it is a very much your culture. It's like like it's a market town and things yes. like that, which yeah. is a big part of it. Um, that when you're buying from independence, you're not, you know, putting money in Starbucks that don't pay taxes or that kind of yeah. thing. Um, you're feeding families at the end of the day. Yeah. But not only that, like, you know, you probably use, like, local supplies as well, yeah. which is something that, like, we talk a lot about a lot in here that I don't think a lot of people realise, that when they use a local company, they're using a local print place, they're using a local yep. plumber, they're using, like, all these things are all probably local businesses that use it. Yeah. So not only feeding their families, they're feeding... Food five or six or seven other businesses families yeah. as well like so it's um has Gisborne been a good place then to start up as a um, business or? it's it has been good i mean it's i'm still i haven't been going a year yet so it's still it's still sort of difficult getting getting it going it's still not quite there yet to um um sort of pay the bills for yeah, yeah. and everything so um but uh i do like the town yeah um and and the people there and the customers, because it is that sort of bit smaller market town. Yeah, it's community. Everybody it? sort of seem people come in and everybody sort of oh, hi. It's yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so you get to know everybody and um, everybody sort of you know, and people come in and like oh I haven't seen you for ages. And yeah, yeah. So it's it's a bit more of a nice sort of community feel. Yeah. yeah. Than just um, like uh, sort of I mean, I've got nothing against Middlesbrough or anything like that, but it's more. Um, it's bigger, sort of, it's, it's bigger, it's more fragmented. bigger, faster, yeah, yeah. and people go in, get what they need, go yeah, out, yeah. and um, so I had looked at Middlesbrough, and I did want more of that sort of local community mm-hmm. thing, and I want to be able to get um, sort of more involved in sort of the community as well, um, and I do I sort of get involved with sort of some of the churches and because yeah. um, it's quite a um, there's quite a, there's a couple of churches around there, and the church groups all doing different yeah, yeah. things and. Um, it's just getting the time to actually Get commit a lot of, yeah, of course. certainly I think once the business is a bit more established and yeah. I can eventually uh, sort of get some regular staff in and yeah, stuff yeah. I'll be, be able to do a bit more um, and business for me is um, it, it, it is one of my sort of passions as well as like sort of um, like the Italian sort of yep. culture and food and things um, similar to what you guys are doing where you've mm. got your business but you're also helping other people, other yeah, people yeah. by yeah. doing this podcast um, which is which is great. So eventually, I want to be able to do something because um, I've got some space upstairs um, where I might be able to do something to help other businesses as well. Because yeah, yeah. Um, in my sort of when I worked for the um, sort of the big corporate company, although all the businesses were part of one big yeah. company, um, a lot of them sort of they've been the the company had acquired them, they bought them from family businesses and things like that. Yeah, and it was my job to go around and help. Those businesses, those yeah, businesses yeah. to improve what they were doing, yeah. um, and which I enjoyed doing, um, but then sort of got uh, sort of more involved in the sort of the, the higher workings of a big company. I yeah, think, this is yeah, good. a bit of a disconnect for the you stuff do, that you, you um, enjoy. And don't you? it's just, and the more and more I look into things now since I've been made redundant about it, it's the big companies. You have all the shareholders and everything at the top, directors and everything yep. that are just lying in their own pockets rather than yeah, yeah. Um, they want an extra 10 pence on the, each dividend on yeah, their of course. Own, yeah, yeah. Um, rather than sort of so say, oh, well, we don't need that um, that warehouse person over there because he costs us 20 grand a year. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, well, we'll keep that and we'll get an extra so many pence an That's hour. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just, um, they're actually quite ruthless. Yeah, um, because at, at the end of the day, they're not speaking to those people directly. They don't know no. them. They're not the one who have to pull the trigger on these people, etc. Yeah. So, it's easy. It's a lot easier for to make those decisions. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know. Yeah. And I'd never sort of really seen that side of business until I actually was involved. It now I had to go through um, through an exercise where I had to make some people redundant myself. Yeah. Um, and I was just trying to find out the reasons why we were doing it, and you get down to the reasons, and you're like, I really don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's gonna. Kind of, 
those people that are sort of are working in a, right to the front line it's going to impact mm-hmm. impact them massively where you might get um an extra an extra night's um or you'll be able to get that uh, extra bottle of wine on the uh, on the bill at the, yeah yeah it's kind yeah. of like for the 20 grand that we don't spend on him like there's nothing to you but that's yeah. like his yearly income you know yeah. what i mean you get a upgraded car or another holiday or something yes. like that where yeah. you know yeah but um so i was getting a little bit um sort of disenchanted should i say with them um, with the corporate world anyway so when the redundancy came last year it was a bit of a relief to be honest cause yeah things had lined up kind yeah. of it was the sign you needed yeah. really, to kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. make the decision yeah so it was so is there any kind of um stuff that you you wanting to bring into business any kind of dishes or anything or like um, any kind of the stuff that you want to do over you know the there's, there's loads and loads of stuff yeah, yeah. that I want to do. The the thing I find difficult is, um, is picking an idea to to do because yeah, there's so, um, there's so many possibilities. There's so my mind is just constantly going whirling yeah, yeah. round. It's like um, it's like one of them um, kids' toys where you know they, they have a little template and they just squiggle around and all the lines go everywhere. Yeah, my yeah, mind's yeah. a bit like that at the minute with that ideas is, yeah, going yeah. round. And certainly when I go away on holiday and I. I'm yeah. always in the when I'm in the restaurants and coffee shops and I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh, right, oh, that's how they do that. That's yeah, how they yeah, do that. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it was the the couple of weeks break I've just had. It's been really good to sort of um, just been talking to the to, um, producer there as well about sort of taking a bit of a break away from oh, the, the daily yeah, workings yeah. of things because yeah. you just get so caught up in things. Yeah. Um, and you sort of, it's hard to sort of take that little bit of a step back and say, right, oh, okay, yeah. where are we? What actually are we doing? Am I doing all the right things? Or am I just making myself busier and busier yeah. and busier by oh, totally. doing... And we're all guilty of that. Yeah. You know, we're all guilty of doing that. So so there's lots of ideas um, sort of bubbling away um, mm-hmm. that um, sort of I, I want to do. Um, but it's just sort of getting... A couple of them down that I know that are really going to work. Yeah, yeah. And um, and focusing on those rather than because yeah. I think when I first started, I was trying to do sort too of much everything. Yeah. Um, I had um, I had quite a big big menu. I was open. I was working about 60, 68 hours in the cafe yeah, myself, yeah. doing one one day through to well yeah, seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. Um, and I do like late night on a Friday and yeah, Saturday, yeah. so. Um, not uh, about three or four months ago. No, we were, yeah, about three months ago, I sort of reduced the hours down, um, which has been great. Um, less sort of money coming in, hmm. which is because that's always the um, the balancing act is right. Oh, I know sense. if I open more, I can get more money in, and yeah. but then if I keep working those hours, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when you, and when you're first starting off, and you know you need that extra bit of cash, you say, oh, should I do it? It's like right. Take a look at the longer pick, longer um, yeah, yeah. and just do it. So, um, so while I've been away on holiday, I've sort of looked at the hours again. So mm-hmm. I'm, um, I'm going to revise them again, um, and uh, sort of. I was getting more requests for evening time, yeah, yeah. meals over the weekend, than because um, whereas before I used to do Friday and Saturday, hmm. I knocked it down just to Friday. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm going to drop one of the days during the week, yeah. Because um, a lot of the businesses around there do, and yeah. um, they, they shut on a Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very popular Wednesdays in some yeah. towns and stuff, isn't it? Like yeah. half days, etc. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do close one of the days so I can open up again on a on a Saturday night. So that's um, something probably start in September, um, and just I'm going to try and sort of do a different special each week, hmm. as I was saying earlier with the seasonalities and try and get the the seasonal products in. Yeah. Um, and sort of having um, the extra day off during the week is going to give me time to be able to plan for those. Yeah. So try and do what I've been trying to do for a long time is sort of plan a couple of weeks in ahead yeah. rather than sort of getting to that week and going, right, what am I going to do on Friday? Yeah, yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, um, I understand that. Because as well, um, it's it's getting it out there and getting people to know what, because you're going to change something and do something different every week. Hmm. You need to let people know, yeah. Because um, they don't know it's there. That you're not, they're not going to come through the door to try it. Yeah, yeah, massively. So oh, absolutely. Um, it's. I'm still finding my feet mm-hmm. with it. So there's. Um, I'm just going. My main focus at the minute is just to keep the quality consistent. So make sure that um, everything that goes out from from the kitchen and yeah. from the coffee machines is where it should be. Yeah. That it's right. Products um, that I get in. 
um, the, the right products, the, mm-hmm. the fresh, the quality yep. is there, um, local where I can get them. Um, obviously, because a lot of it's Italian, it's harder to ke- keep it local. Yeah. Um, but where, it, where I can, I keep it local. Yeah. Like the, um, um, I do a breakfast panini, which isn't really Italian, so it's yeah. um, bacon, yeah, tomato, yeah, yeah. bits and pieces. Um, so the bacon and things I tried to get from local farmers and, yeah, of course, yeah. uh, and things. So, um, which is quite a few around in Gisborough. Yeah, um, it's good that it keeps it, you know, yeah. like local and spot everything around there. Um, so there's so there's that. Um, and I think that's just the main thing. Just keep that, keep changing with the seasonality um, and keep the quality there. Hmm. Um, and I think if I can do that, and then as I sort of settle down a bit yeah. more um, and really find my feet with the place, yeah. then I can start doing different ideas. And, yeah. And just, changing and things. So. It's, got, it's got to get the, the right yeah. stuff right, isn't it, at the end of the yeah. day? Um, if I had 100 grand in my back pocket, then I'd be able to do all sorts yeah, right yeah, now. But... <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so when people come on the podcast, we ask them the same three questions okay. towards the end of the, of the podcast. And every uh, every single person is different, which is why we ask. The first is, um, what did your idea of success look like And I'll tell you three questions so you can have a bit yeah, yeah, think sure. about it. And everybody's different with it. So we've had people who said, I just want to spend more time with family. We've said people, like, I want a million. Like, it doesn't matter. Yes, everybody's yeah, yeah. for everybody. Um, the second one is, what kind, have you ever had any failures or setbacks or what it looked like that at the time that's later led to a success or an opportunity for you later on? And the third one is one thing, this is probably quite easy for you to answer this now after coming back, but one thing that you're completely obsessed with, um, it can be an item, a TV show, um, a little gadget, it doesn't matter what it is, like the yeah. one thing. So we'll start with the first one, From so what does success look like to you? Um, success um, to me and my, um, my view of what success is has changed quite drastically yeah. Yeah. over, um, well not drastically, significantly. Um, it's not not for the worse. Um, over the last sort of fifteen, eighteen years, however long I've been mm-hmm. working, yeah. um, try not to forget when I started working. Uh, <laughs> um, if you'd have asked me this question fifteen years ago, mm-hmm. um, the answer probably would have been, "I want to be a millionaire." Yeah, um, because I was driven by money and yeah. um, everything I'd done. I was trying to. Money, do new business, money, make yeah, more yeah, money, yeah. make more money. I, back then, I was working all the hours. I could work really hard. Yeah. Um, and then sort of went through what... Had a sort of started a family. Mm. Um, once you start the family, everything changes. Yeah, massively. Um, so success to me now looks like being able... Is sort of providing a good life for my wife and kids and any sort of my other family, um, sort of helping them out where, where I can. Um and sort of, I'd like to be able to sort of have the money to be able to have more than just the basics in life. Yeah. Um, because like say the family holidays and things yeah, like course. that. Yeah. Um, I just love going away because it's, it's a break from everything else that's, yeah, that's yeah. going so on. It's vital. And you can just, um, so being able to afford those t- type of things, not bothered about having big mansions or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and just being able to spend time with, with the kids and yeah. not, and eventually... Um, not having to work 60, 70 yeah, hours, yeah. hours a week yeah, myself. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll, even when I'm older, I don't think I'll ever give up work. No. Because I'd, I'm just that type of person that needs to keep going and yeah, keep just, on yeah. with something. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice if I was sat on a beach somewhere with my laptop and, yeah, and, yeah. and whatever. I think that's a pipe dream. Yeah. I don't think anybody really uh, does that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just having a, a sort of a comfortable yeah. life where it's... Um, the, I've got my family around me and everybody's help, happy, healthy and mm-hmm. so yeah. Okay. So the second one is have you ever had something at the time you thought was a massive setback or even, you know, a failure, etc. that has led uh, um something better down the line? I think um in in my uh, I was self employed from the age of seventeen up until twenty six when I went to uni. Um and it was it was um I had a few different businesses, tried a few different things, um, and some of them were some of them were great, some of them weren't so it's good. Not so, much. so, so I've had. Um, I don't think there's any one specific example of of what's been a real huge setback. That's yeah. um, sort of, I, I think, just a lot of um, trial and error. Yep. Just going through some of the businesses worked well. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we had a couple of businesses that have tried that didn't get off the ground, so yeah. money lost. Yeah. Um, and it's those type of things where it helps you further along down yeah. the line. Yeah. Um, because you learn from your mistakes. Massively. Um, I've never been one of sort of hiding my mistakes or yeah. saying, "Well, oh, that wasn't me." Or yeah. Um, in the earlier days, you sometimes make a couple of excuses of, "Oh, well, it was this, it was that, yeah. it was the other." That's why it didn't work. It wasn't my fault. Yeah. It was. Um, but then, as you sort of get a bit old, a bit wiser, you sort of look. Yeah, yeah no, that was my fault. Yeah. Um, you know, and I still, 20, 20. I still look back at some of the things that um, that I'd done um, when I was younger to try and sort of make that money that I thought was going to be the idea to make my yeah, next, yeah. to to make me a millionaire yeah. and things. Um, and just learn from those type of things. So, and my memory is pretty good, um, so I can recall things from yeah f- years back, and think about right. Okay, if I'm trying, if I'm going to do something new, I'll look at it, and for some reason that mistake will pop up in yeah. my head, and and I'll think right. Okay, what did I do back then yeah. that made that go wrong? Yeah, and how does it apply now? And apply it to to that situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and. Because I'm a bit older than I was back then, a bit more wise, a bit more, a lot more experienced than I did. It's easier to sort of look at something and say, "Yeah, I really want to do it, but it isn't going to work." Yeah. Whereas before, I just well, gung ho. Yeah. Right. My idea. I know yeah. best. <laughs> it's going to work, and you just just go ahead. So, not one major thing, mm. but just a, a lot of a lot of yeah, yeah nothing things. that you know destroy yeah. you, but enough that it gives you the experience yeah. to be beneficial. I, I suppose. I mean. The, the industry I used to be in, the, the, my biggest business was in the motor trade, um, and it was starting to uh, starting to get quite um, sort of heavy with um, some not so nice people. Yeah. Um, it was a industry sort of known for um, some r- ripping people off and yeah. stuff like that, which I was never never about. But there was some quite nasty people in there as yeah. well. And when I tried to introduce new products, sometimes I'd get people coming around threatening me and oh, you can't do that, you don't do this. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I sold the business. Um, and I think um, sort of rather than sticking at it and um, sort of having a, a bad experience of things, I just thought, right, this isn't going to turn hmm. out well. Yeah. Get out while you can Yeah, yeah. and, um, and do something well. So I think um, if I hadn't have done that... Then sort of listened to my instinct and thought, right, yeah, this isn't gonna gonna yeah. work like this, um, and do something different. Um, then I probably wouldn't be where where I am now. I probably wouldn't have went to uni. Yeah. Um, obviously, learned quite a lot at uni, yeah. which led me on to the um, working for the uh, the big corporate company that was like a multi billion pound yeah. company. Yeah, quite a good position there. Um, met sort of worked with some fantastic people that were there and learnt yeah much more than I ever would working on my own yeah yeah of course so that was probably a bit of a defining moment yeah but not something that i really had control over yeah um so i can't say it was a setback or anything like it It was just something that happened and um absolutely yeah and so finally what is one thing that you're completely obsessed about at the moment um something that i'm completely obsessed about at the moment is just business yep um it's. I know I've got my obsession with with Italy. And, yeah, yeah, and all that type of stuff. Same thing, really. It's yeah. It's the same thing. And my business is yeah the Italian culture and and things like that. But just business in itself. Yeah. Um, because when this one once I've got this one sorted, mm-hmm. it won't be my last thing. It'll be there'll be something else. Yeah. It might be something that complements this business. Mm-hmm. It might be something that um, uh, I see that I think right. Yeah, that that'd be good. Yeah. And the next thing I do, it could be could be good, could be another yeah, yeah. one that doesn't quite go yeah, so yeah. well. But um, I just I can't give up on yeah on sort of trying things. And I've, people have always um, sort of said to me because uh, I I've tried loads of different things, I've tried loads of different businesses, and um, not in sort of negative cri- criticism or anything like that, but li- just little jibes about oh, how many jobs have you had, how many yeah. businesses have you tried. And I always think, well, you look at an artist like either a singer or a painter or something yeah, like yeah. that, they might have one big, huge hit. Yeah, yeah. But how many different songs or paintings have they tried before that? Yeah, yeah. That people have thought, yeah, no, no bother. Exactly. They don't say to them, oh, 
that one was good. Why don't try sit painting the same picture but better? Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be something different. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, you didn't see like forty versions of the Mona Lisa, did you? No, you know, so. there probably was. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Leading up to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but nobody else seen them. Mm. Um, but it's just um, I've just got to keep doing that, and it, it's if I'm not happy in doing something, then I mm. think what's the point in doing it? Yeah. Um, and I got a bit like that with my old job and working for the big corporate company. Um, and I just think if you don't like doing something, mm. um, it's not just easy just to go right, bang, stop, yeah. go do something else, but make the tiny little steps to, to go and do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just business. Yeah, yeah. That's, in my, general, obs- that's, yeah, that's yeah. my obsession, yeah. All encompassing one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for anybody who's listening who um, is visiting Gisborough or in the local area or are passing through for whatever reason, where can they find you? Um, they can find us on Westgate, which is Gisborough High Street. Hmm. Um, so we're sort of, uh, as I said earlier, on the first floor. Um, so um, we're towards the sort of the... This, uh, Turn the bottom end of the high street isn't going to make any um, slight bit of difference no to anybody that doesn't know the area. Yeah, yeah. Um, so down towards where the uh, where the priory is, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you've got uh, the few businesses around us that um, we've got HSBC, yep. um, we've got uh, Boots, and we're above um, the Well Pharmacy. Mm. Um, so we're there, and there's a, um, a little archway sort of between the Well Pharmacy and Clip and Cut Barbers. Mm-hmm. Um, so you go down there. Um, yep. Nice little archway that we've uh, that we've tidied up and uh, sort of made look nice and pretty. Yeah. And then you head upstairs into a little piece of Italy. Oh, fantastic! Thanks so, so much for coming on. It's been great to chat you. Um, I always learn so much when I talk to people. Now yeah, and we can add Italy to a, yeah. a place that we're going to visit as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Don't no, no, It's been an absolute pleasure. Great. Uh, this has been episode eighteen of the Tea Side Business Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. The podcast is promoted and produced by Person at Person Marketing. See you on the next one.